Pneumonia by Brian Fissel and Dr. Patricia Stuck. Learning Objectives By the end of this video, you will be able to list the risk factors for developing pneumonia, identify the most common organisms responsible for pneumonia by age group, diagnose pneumonia and determine its severity by clinical presentation and physical examination, identify when it is necessary to obtain radiographs and other diagnostic testing, which include viral testing, determine when hospitalization is necessary and formulate a plan for treatment, and identify and formulate treatment plans for common complications of pneumonia. Introduction. Pneumonia is an infection of the lung that is common in pediatrics and that can have variable etiologies. While most children recover uneventfully, it is a significant cause of morbidity and mortality worldwide. Pneumonia is the single greatest cause of death in children, causing over 2 million deaths annually in children younger than 2 years of age and representing 20% of all deaths in this age group. In the developed world, annual incidence is 3 to 4 per 1,000 children, with an annual mortality rate of less than 1 per 1,000. There is increased incidence in colder months. Pathophysiology Pneumonia is a lower respiratory tract infection involving inflammation of the lung parenchyma, particularly the alveoli, interstitial space, and pleura. The lungs contain many defense mechanisms to prevent infection, such as the cough reflex, mucociliary drainage, and humoral and cell-mediated immunity. Deficiencies in one or more of these mechanisms can lead to invasion by pathogens and cause pneumonia. Other risk factors associated with higher rates of pneumonia include poverty, multiple siblings, exposure to tobacco smoke, prematurity, and urban residents. There are many pathogens that can cause pneumonia. The most common offending organisms in otherwise healthy children may be broken down by the ages in which they are frequently seen. Among neonates, less than one month old, infection is typically acquired from aspiration of infected amniotic fluid. So the most common causes of pneumonia in this age group include group B streptococci and E. coli. Among infants one to three months of age, viral pathogens such as respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, human metanumovirus, influenza, and parainfluenza are the most common causes of pneumonia. A febrile pneumonia of infancy can also be seen in this age group and is classically due to chlamydia trachomatis acquired during vaginal delivery. Bordetella pertussis should also be considered due to increasing incidence and significant morbidity and mortality in this age group. An infant with Bordetella pertussis infection may or may not have a fever. Viruses remain the most common pathogens among children aged 4 months to 4 years, most commonly RSV, followed by parainfluenza, influenza, adenovirus, and rhinovirus. Up to one-third of children have a co-infection with two or more viruses. Bacterial pneumonia may be caused by Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenza, and Morax allocateralis. Incidence of pneumonia due to the first two pathogens has been less affected by vaccination than meningitis or bacteremia. Pneumonia due to atypical organisms such as Mycoplasma pneumoniae and Chlamydophila species is common among children aged 5 and older. However, both the viral pathogens above and typical bacterial organisms may also be causative. Clinical Presentation The most common presentation of pneumonia is fever and cough. However, the challenge in clinically identifying pneumonia lies in the fact that the presenting symptoms are nonspecific and can be subtle, especially in young children. Tachypnea is a particularly important finding and is the most sensitive and specific sign of pneumonia in infants. Other symptoms include hypoxemia, abdominal pain, and increased work of breathing. Increased work of breathing can manifest as nasal flaring, accessory muscle use, such as retractions or grunting. In neonates, pneumonia must be considered when the following signs are present. Respiratory distress soon after birth, lethargy, apnea, tachycardia, poor feeding, irritability, temperature instability, and abdominal distension. The clinical presentation can help clue you in on the cause of pneumonia. Illness in bacterial pneumonia is often sudden in onset and of greater severity. 
Pneumonia secondary to atypical pathogens frequently has sudden onset fever, but is typically more progressive in its course and can be associated with a broad array of symptoms, including prolonged cough, malaise, myalgia, headache, photophobia, and sore throat. A febrile pneumonia can also be seen in infants less than four months of age and is classically due to chlamydia trachomatis. It presents with rhinorrhea with or without conjunctivitis and staccato cough, as well as tachypnea and diffuse inspiratory rails without fever on examination. Viral pneumonia classically has gradual onset and is often preceded by fever and upper respiratory symptoms such as cough, rhinorrhea, or congestion. Diagnosis. The presenting symptoms of pneumonia have a broad differential diagnosis. In newborns, bacterial pneumonia in the first day of life may be impossible to differentiate from transient tachypnea of the newborn or respiratory distress syndrome. Thus, these patients are often treated empirically for bacterial pneumonia. Depending on the history, bronchopulmonary dysplasia, foreign body aspiration, and chronic pulmonary disorders, including asthma, bronchiectasis, and cystic fibrosis, should be considered. Aspiration pneumonia should be considered in patients with oropharyngeal dysphagia, gastroesophageal reflux, tracheoesophageal fistula, cleft palate, and neuromuscular disorders. Anatomical malformations such as bronchogenic cysts and congenital lobar emphysema may also be considered as part of the differential diagnosis. A thorough history and physical examination is often sufficient to diagnose uncomplicated pneumonia. When asking about history, the onset of symptoms and nature of the cough, such as whether it is wheezy or paroxysmal, can help narrow the diagnosis and rule out anatomical malformations and exacerbations of underlying chronic pulmonary disorders. Non-respiratory symptoms such as lethargy, irritability, and poor appetite can help determine illness severity. Verification of immunization status is important to rule out serious pathogens, such as Bordetella pertussis or Haemophilus influenza, and influences management decisions. Physical examination should include an assessment of vital signs, particularly the presence of fever and tachypnea. Pulse oximetry should be performed in all children with suspected pneumonia to assess for hypoxemia. A thorough pulmonary examination is necessary for evaluating pneumonia and can provide clues to the etiology. Bacterial pneumonia often presents with lobar pneumonia. Examination of the affected lobe will reveal rails or diminished breath sounds on auscultation and dullness to percussion. Viral pneumonia, however, is often a diffuse process with low-pitched wheezing heard throughout the chest. Rapid nasopharyngeal testing for viral infections should be performed in the evaluation of pneumonia as it can decrease the need for additional diagnostic testing and unnecessary antibiotic use. Other studies, including chest radiographs, blood cultures, and complete blood count, are not necessary for mild lower respiratory symptoms consistent with pneumonia in children well enough to be treated in the outpatient setting. Indications for obtaining chest radiographs include hypoxemia, significant respiratory distress, failure of initial antibiotic treatment, and hospitalization. Severe pneumonia is an indication for other testing, such as blood and or sputum cultures, viral testing, complete blood count, and acute phase reactants to help identify pathogens and monitor treatment efficacy. Management. Appropriate treatment of pneumonia depends on the severity of illness and whether the patient requires hospitalization. Indications for hospitalization include moderate to severe pneumonia as defined by respiratory distress, sustained oxygen saturation of less than 90% or toxic appearance. Infants less than three to six months of age should be hospitalized due to the risk of hypoxemia, bacteremia, and rapid deterioration. Outpatient management of pneumonia depends on the age and offending pathogen. Preschool age children who frequently have viral pneumonia are not routinely treated with antimicrobials. For fully immunized children of all ages with suspected bacterial pneumonia, High-dose oral amoxicillin is the first-line treatment for adequate coverage of streptococcus pneumoniae. Macrolides, such as azithromycin, are first-line treatment for children with signs and symptoms consistent with atypical pneumonia, though incidence of resistance is rising. The macrolide erythromycin is first-line treatment for afebrile pneumonia of infancy due to chlamydia trachomatis. To achieve maximal benefit, 
Antiviral therapy with oseltamivir should be initiated within 48 hours of symptom onset for children with signs and symptoms consistent with influenza, especially in children with underlying conditions of higher risk of complications. It is not necessary to delay initiation of therapy until confirmatory test results are known. Inpatient management of pneumonia depends primarily on immunization status and suspected pathogens. Fully immunized children with suspected bacterial pneumonia should receive ampicillin intravenously for coverage of streptococcus pneumoniae. For children who are not fully immunized, live in areas with high levels of penicillin-resistant streptococcus pneumoniae, have complications, or have a life-threatening infection, first-line treatment is a third-generation parenteral cephalosporin, such as ceftriaxone. Hospitalized children with pneumonia due to atypical organisms should be treated with dual therapy involving a beta-lactam plus a macrolide or tetracycline or a fluoroquinolone monotherapy. Treatment of children with pneumonia due to suspected Staphylococcus aureus should include dual therapy with a beta-lactam antibiotic and either vancomycin or clindamycin for coverage of methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Complications. A number of complications can occur in pneumonia, including pleural effusions, empyemas, and abscesses. Pleural effusions are typically seen with pneumococcal and mycoplasma pneumonias, whereas necrotic pneumonias and empyemas are more associated with group A streptococci and staphylococcal pneumonia. Small stable effusions can be observed, whereas patients who are ill-appearing or have large or loculated effusions may require thoracentesis and chest tube placement. Pulmonary abscesses do not usually require drainage. Methicillin-sensitive and methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus cause the majority of abscesses in children who are otherwise healthy and should be treated with a third-generation cephalosporin and either vancomycin or clindamycin as determined by susceptibility testing. Summary. In summary, pneumonia is a lower respiratory tract infection most frequently caused by viruses in young children and bacteria, including atypical organisms, in older children. It often resolves uneventfully but can have significant morbidity and mortality, especially when there is underlying chronic disease or a complicated pneumonia. Typical findings on clinical exam include fever, cough, and tachypnea. Most children with pneumonia can be managed with supportive measures and, if indicated, antibiotics on an outpatient basis. However, patients with more severe disease may require hospitalization and parenteral antibiotics. While most of these children improve after two to three days of treatment, a proportion of patients may require further evaluation for complications such as pleural effusion and pulmonary abscesses. Thank you for watching this video on pneumonia.